Hey everyone, welcome back here to Lost My Thread. I'm Teresa and I am back in the UK ready for a little chatty catch up vlog today. So I've never done a chatty vlog before, but I felt like it really made the most sense as a way to just get you up to speed with my trip to Chicago. If you're not aware and you're new to my channel, I am from Chicago, I live in London in the UK, and I recently went back home to visit my family. It had been over three years since I saw them, so it was a very big deal to go home. We had a great trip. It was hard to come back, but also always nice to be home in your own space, in your own bed, all that stuff. But I thought I'd give you a little bit of a highlights of the trip to Chicago. Definitely some sewing related content in there. I'll put some chapters if you want to skip ahead to the bits that you might be interested in. I did order some fabrics online to be shipped to my parents' house that I unpacked and looked at when I arrived. I'll put a link to that video because I've already put that up there on YouTube already. But there are a few more bits, a little bit of more fabric shopping because it happens. Uh, so I will put that later at the end of this video as well. Like I said, the big thing about this trip was just being able to see my family again, which was pretty wonderful. I saw my parents, which is obviously always going to be a big deal. I saw a couple of grandparents, so I've got two grandmothers who are still with us. One is 93 and the other is 97. I was able to see both of them and spend some good quality time with them, which was really important for me on this trip. They're both wonderful and they're both generally doing really well considering they are in their 90s. I'm pretty impressed with how well they're getting on honestly. It was really great to spend a little bit of time with them. I did also go and visit one of my friends, my best friend who's moved now three hours outside of Chicago. I went to go visit her. We stayed at, we stayed at an Airbnb and I got to meet her little two-year-old who I hadn't met before so it was a really awesome thing to be able to see her as well. Obviously I got to see my mom and dad like I said and one of the fun things we were able to do is take some pictures of some of the things that I've made them but I've never actually gotten to photograph on them. Well, I guess it's more my mom than my dad. So my mom, I have made her a basic t-shirt. It is a t-shirt pattern that is my favorite. It's called the Basic Instinct Tee. It's a free t-shirt pattern by Segundo Second Piano. I made her t-shirt out of an art gallery cotton jersey fabric. Art Gallery Cotton Jersey is really soft, really lovely, and just comfortable and beautiful quality of color. It's really good, sort of long lasting after many washes, I can contest to. But yeah, I would say that that's one of my favorite t-shirting fabrics, but it is pricier, so I don't just get that stuff any anytime. But it was a gift for my mom, so I thought it was definitely worth it. I got a little picture of her wearing one that I made her, and then another t-shirt in the same type of fabric, art gallery cotton jersey, but with a different print that I'm wearing standing next to her. That was really fun. And then the toaster sweater that I made her for her birthday, just in July gone, she had really complimented the sweatshirt that I'd made when I made the toaster sweater and said she really loved the color and all that, and I thought, okay, she obviously wants one. She even got to the point of telling me she'd prefer hers to be a little bit longer, so I lengthened hers. I feel like on the whole, hers hits her where she wants it to. I think she looks really cute in it. I thought it'd be fun to pose for a picture together, which we did. And then I did also have a little bit of a play with some tie-dye while I was in Chicago. I had thought that I might try to film it so that I could show a video of the process. But honestly, we were in my parents' basement where the lighting was very poor. It was really difficult to get any kind of decent footage, so I didn't bother doing any filming of it. But I can show you a little bit of the things that I did. So one thing that I did was tie-dye a t-shirt for my dad. I haven't made my dad anything before, which I will have to do at some point. But we ended up buying a ready-to-wear t-shirt that I knew was gonna fit him, a plain white ready-to-wear t-shirt. And I did a tie-dye technique it didn't work fantastically well perfectly, but it's pretty dang good. Where I stuck a fork in the middle of the t-shirt, sounds really bizarre, but yeah, you lay the t-shirt flat out on a surface, stick a fork in the middle, and then you twist the fork around, kind of like you're twirling spaghetti or something like that. And then it forms a little spiral, and then I put some rubber bands around that, and I tried to just tie dye around the spiral. Hopefully you can see it in the pictures. My dad is a total ham and he was very much enjoying taking the pictures, posing around, you know, showing off how hot he was, all that kind of thing. You might be hearing some noise. I've got some neighbors doing a bit of work outside, but this is my time to film. So I really hope that it's not really distracting. If it is, I'll be back here another time. But for now, 
we're here and I'm gonna crack on. But yeah, my dad's t-shirt turned out really well. I also did some tie-dye for myself. So I bought some fabric that I wanted to play around with tie-dyeing. A different technique, it's more of a folding technique, often referred to as Japanese or shibori style, but essentially you end up making some long strips of fabric, doing like a concertina accordion type fold and then folding those together again, putting a rubber band around it and then tie-dyeing different sections. I'm not describing it terribly well, but Jerry and Stitches has a really good tutorial, which is where I followed, and I'll put a link down below if you're interested to see it. But I can just show you what the fabric looked like. I do think it turned out really well. It's, I had to, ended up having to put the fabric into smaller pieces because it just wouldn't fold up very well. It's a linen viscose blend, which is quite a thick fabric, so I probably didn't do myself any favors trying that technique on a fabric that's a little bit thicker. But I'm planning to do a tiered dress with it, so I don't think it will make a difference. But I can show you some of the pieces, and each of the pieces is a little bit different, which is quite a cool effect of it. But this is one of them, just to show you. So you can see it's not just like a, you know, spotty, um, blobby kind of a thing from tie-dye. It's quite a patterned design, so there's quite a specific pattern on there. I'll show you one more. I mean, they're more or less the same, but just so that you can get an idea that they're not exactly the same. This one's probably got a little bit more of the color in certain areas, so more of the blue for sure. But it was just a lot of fun to play around with the technique, honestly, and I definitely will want to try doing some more tie-dye at some point, and that will get turned into a dress that I will show you at some point as well. But it was a fun project to be doing while we were there. As far as seeing family as well, I do have a big family. I come from a big family. Both of my parents have a ton of siblings and most of them have kids. So we had quite a few get-togethers with aunts and uncles and my big groups of cousins on each side of the family met up as well. One very special thing was one of my aunts, my Aunt Katie, she's very creative. Their whole family is very creative and she's been playing around with a bit of embroidery recently and she very kindly made me an embroidered piece to take home, which I couldn't believe. It was the sweetest thing. So let me show you. It's a little embroidery. Hopefully this will come up on here quite clear. It says, tacos por favor, which means tacos please. I've got a little pinata up here, a little chili pepper, looks like a serrano chili, a little taco, how cute is the detail on that taco, and a cactus. And she's mounted it for me so that I can hang it up. And I'm definitely gonna be putting it somewhere in my sewing space. So watch this space to be able to see it. Many of you might know already, I am crazy about Mexican food. We ate so much food when we were home in Chicago because that's just kind of what you do when you go on vacation, especially when you're in Chicago, which has got so much good food and all kinds of food that I missed not being able to have. But Mexican food is always top of my list of what I wanna have when I'm back home because there's just not that many great places to get Mexican food in London or in the UK. We're pretty far from Mexico, not quite as big of a Mexican population. So I think we probably ended up having Mexican food about six or seven times when we were over there for a two week vacation, which I think is pretty good going, and two times were even on the same day. So that gives you an idea of the level of my love for Mexican food. But I thought that was just super cute that my aunt made that for me, thinking of me. So thank you, Katie, if you're watching. It really, really touched me, and it makes me very happy to have something handmade by you, because handmade gifts are always the best hands down. The other thing that is just kind of coincidentally gifted to me by my parents, my parents noticed me admiring theirs of this and my dad decided to go ahead and order one for us to take home, which is just really adorable and hilarious. And it's sitting back behind me here and it is this little taco truck. Taco truck on there, I think it says, yeah, mas tacos, which is more tacos. But it's not just a little taco truck. It is a butter dish. <laughs> How funny is that? I saw this in my parents' house. I did not realize what it was. It's like, that's a kooky little decoration. Okay, I mean, that's cute. And then I lifted up and found the butter and it really cracked me up. So we ended up taking home two Mexican themed gifts. I do have to say for my friends and family out there, I'm not looking for a whole host more of taco gifts. Sometimes people get it in their head that, oh, they love all this thing. I'm gonna buy them a million things with, I don't know, like donkeys on it or foxes because they seem to like it. 
I got enough taco stuff now to last me a good long while, but it was just really sweet to get these thoughtful gifts from everybody back home. And it just gives me a little way to think of them and remember them when I'm far away. So that was a nice little bonus. Something else I wanted to mention, my Aunt Katie's daughter, my cousin Lizzie, she works at the Art Institute in Chicago. She's an art curator for the Art Institute, which is the coolest job that I probably can think of. I, I'm amazed at all the stuff that she gets up to. She has relatively recently, kind of at the beginning of the pandemic, started working on a project to bring in a crazy, huge, beautiful stained glass window that was designed by Tiffany Company. And it was, oh gosh, I'm gonna forget where it was. I'll put up on the screen where it was when they found it. But she was one of the people who went out to look at it and figure out how they could take it out of the church that it was in and bring it to the Art Institute so that more people could enjoy it and appreciate it and get to see it. And she was a part of the team who were painstakingly cleaning it throughout the pandemic. Well, she wasn't part of, she wasn't cleaning, but you know, she was on the team of people who were doing it. And it opened in the Art Institute, went up as an installation, as like, as you first come in, you cannot miss it. It's right there, glowing and beautiful. That happened earlier this year. I feel like I wanna say it was May, but again, I'll put it up if I'm getting the wrong information. But she told us all about the different elements of the stained glass, different ways that it was made. She can talk for days about art and I can just listen forever and ever, honestly. I love hearing her tell me about art in general because she's got such a vast wealth of information that she can share with us. But yeah, I would say that if you are in Chicago, if you're going to Chicago, you wanna check out this stained glass window. If you go to the Art Institute, you're not gonna miss it. Like I said, it's right there when you come in and it is breathtaking in real life. But I did get some pictures of her talking to us about it. It's the picture with me and my mom, my husband and my cousin Lizzie, and then some pictures of us standing in front of it. But yeah, really absolutely breathtaking to behold in real life. The other great thing that my cousin was able to tell me about was the Bisa Butler exhibition that I would not have known was going on if she hadn't mentioned it to me. I wasn't going to the Art Institute just to have a browse around. As much fun as that is, and as much as I love doing that, I really came because I wanted to see the stained glass window that she took part in bringing to the Art Institute. And of course I wanted to see it in real life. But Bisa Butler is an incredible artist. She makes these absolutely stunning quilts and they are, people, they are human figures on the quilts, but the way she puts the fabrics together, they are so expressive, they are so alive. The colors are incredibly vibrant. She used a lot of Ankara African wax print fabric, and I recognized a lot of fabrics that I've been seeing during Ankara Appreciation Week, so definitely something that I enjoyed in particular. But I will say that these, these quilts are just really something else. It's I'm not gonna be able to put up all the pictures or show you really what it was like to see in real life, but the detail on these things, the detail on the eyelashes, the detail on, like I, one of the things my cousin mentioned is that sometimes she would use elements of what's on the fabric to actually come outside of the human figure because that part of the fabric was kind of bringing its own life. I'll put some pictures, you could hopefully see what I mean, but. She is really a really incredible artist, and if you are able to check it out, you really will want to see this exhibition. It's not anything you have to pay extra to get in. If you can go on a free day, or if you can go just for a day where you pay general entrance, you don't have to pay more for this particular exhibition. So no reason not to see it if you're in the Chicago area. If you like fabric, come on. You're not gonna be disappointed, honestly. I was blown away by these works of art. Something else that I was hoping to do while I was in Chicago is to have a play with a beautiful vintage Singer sewing machine that my mom has. So there's a sewing machine that's been in my parents' house as long as I can remember. It is a treadle vintage Singer sewing machine. I will put up the number for the machine if I can remember it. I know I can look it up and see what it is because I don't remember it off the top of my head. But this is an incredibly beautiful, fun sewing machine that my mom had recently gotten the belt replaced on. And I thought that she'd had it fully refurbished and I was planning to go and do a little bit of sewing on it because how much fun would that be? When we first started playing around with it, I did manage to get it going so that the needle was going up and down. And then we wanted to load a bobbin because I was trying to have the bobbin to match the fabric that I was gonna be using. Once we changed it over to the bobbin setting, it wouldn't go back to the normal setting. We couldn't manage to get the foot to go up and down when we were doing the little treadle. So I think she does need to get it properly refurbished. She, we oiled it, of course. We tried playing around with it for hours. Both of us got pretty committed to trying to get it to work, but 
we just couldn't make it happen. But I did do a little video clip of my mom talking a bit about the machine and showing how it comes out and me just enjoying working on that vintage machine, even just to play around with. So I'll let you see that now. So this is a vintage Singer sewing machine that you were saying, Mom, it belonged to your grandmother's aunts who raised her. Excellent. Cool. So that's Aunt Frances. And Aunt Betty. Okay. And do they sew a lot? Yeah. Aunt Betty sold, sold a lot. Cool. It was really her machine. All right. So my mom is going to show me how to open this up and set the machine up and talk me through hopefully how to use it. We'll see how we go. disappointed that I wasn't able to actually sew on this machine but it might be something that we can get organized for one day. I did actually cut out my fabric so I've got all here cut in pieces the Soho 7 tea house dress that I'm going to be making in this fabric. I mentioned this fabric in my fabric haul video. It is a really glorious fabric and I am excited to get this worked up into something for real and my mom did even give me the <laughs> the metal bobbin that we managed to load up. So we did get the bobbin to load. We just couldn't get it to then work, you know, back again to sew as it was supposed to. Something else that we ended up doing that I was hoping to share with you in a bit more detail is we went along to Vogue Fabrics, which is my favorite fabric shop in the Chicago area. It's actually in the suburbs of Chicago in Evanston, Illinois, not far from Chicago. And it is a place that is very close to my heart because I bought a lot of really special fabrics from there. It is probably the place I bought the most fabric from in my life, which is pretty good going considering I've been living in the UK since 2003, but I've gone back again and again to that place. I love that place in general because it always had huge selection, absolutely jam-packed different categories of fabrics, different whole rooms for different types of fabrics. So there's one a room for cotton and dressmaking fabrics. There's a room for more of the kind of fancier fabrics, so things like satins and silks. There's a room for upholstery fabrics. There's a whole remnant room where you can just go digging through all the remnants. So I would go in that place and very happily keep myself occupied for a long old time. I was planning to take you on a tour of the shop and go do a little bit of filming. When I arrived, I did do a little bit of an intro. There was some serious road construction going on, so it was really noisy. It did not seem like it was gonna work very well. Hey guys, we are here at Vogue Fabrics. I had intended to show you the outside of the shop, but there is some major construction going on. I'm sure it is really loud right now. It's not very picturesque. But I'll still show you the window so you can see a little bit of what it normally looks like, and then we're gonna go inside. And then as I was filming and going along the windows, I saw that the window displays were looking really run down. It was looking just all a bit sad. I have found out right before we went that they're actually gonna be closing that shop on the main street in Evanston. They have a warehouse and they're gonna be opening a shop in the warehouse, which I imagine will be smaller scale. I'm sure with people shopping online, there's just not as many people going into the shop, which is a shame, but I understand, especially with COVID, everyone started buying online and then why were they gonna go back to going into the shops? I do love going into a fabric shop though. I mean, you know, I'm sure you can, most of you can appreciate it's not quite the same as shopping online. But when we went into the shop, honestly, I was just struck by how bare the shelves were looking and it was really very depressing. It made me really sad. Like I said, I have really strong ties to that fabric shop. I bought my prom dress fabric in there, my wedding dress fabric in there, in addition to just all kinds of things over the years. So it just made me really sad to see it looking so empty and just, yeah, 
run down, things weren't really tidied very well. I did end up buying quite a few things. So they had a huge sale going on because they are gonna be closing the shop down. Of course, like I said, they're gonna have a shop in the warehouse, but I'm sure it won't be as big, so they're not gonna be able to have as much out on the shop floor. So the sales, I would say, were pretty good. I didn't plan to buy a whole lot when I went in, but then when I saw the prices, it was kind of hard not to buy stuff. The one thing that I did really want to buy something for is something called hashtag project dress a girl. I know that Mari from Mari Sews is going to be talking a lot about that probably before this video comes out. So I'll link to it if that video is out there. I will be doing a whole video on what I'm doing for this project anyway. I can show you a super quick sneak peek though. So I got some fabric that I'm not gonna tell you anything about other than quick flash and a sewing pattern. Again, quick flash. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a lot more about that when I do my full video, but I thought it would be fun just to show you that was the key thing that I was looking for in this fabric shop. But like I said, I had to go get a few extras. One thing that I had to buy, because when you hear the price, you will understand. I got three rolls of buttons, so these whole packs full of buttons in three different colors. It was a dollar each for the whole roll, each color. So this cost me $3. How was I not gonna buy those buttons? Especially when I show you how beautiful these buttons are. They are all really pretty colors and they're kinds of colors that I really like to sew with. These are, I wanna say, half inch buttons. So I can definitely use them for shirts. I can use them for all kinds of things, to be honest with you, dresses easily as well. They are actually metal buttons. They're quite weighty, but there's like a coating, almost like a silicone. I think it must be a silicone coating over the top. And I hope that the colors come across on screen because that is my favorite thing about them is the three colors. And I think they're even fun together and I wanna find a way to incorporate them all into the same kind of a project. But I can show you right now, whoops, yeah, got them all the right way up. Aren't they cute? Aren't they really sweet colors? I really love them all. So those are gonna be really fun to use and I've got buttons for days now. As long as they're in those colors, I'm gonna be pretty set. So I'm looking forward to finding things that I can incorporate them into. I got some fabrics, which I can show you as well. So the first one I'll show you is a really pretty, it's a cotton linen blend. I love linen fabric and I particularly like linen blends because linen is very crinkly, it's very prone to wrinkles, so if it's blended with something else it tends to be a little bit easier to work with, a little bit less wrinkly as you're wearing it. This is a really beautiful striped, it's like a lilac color with a white stripe going into it, cotton linen blend, so it is 55% linen, 40 no, 55% cotton, 45% linen, so it is mostly cotton, but it does have a really nice linen feel to it. It is relatively lightweight actually. I think for that kind of a blend, it is a lighter blend and I think it will have really nice movement when I make it into something. I got three meters of it and it is 60 inches wide. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but I don't really care. I love it and I'm sure it will be cool. But yeah, suggestions welcome always. Tell me if you've got any thoughts of what I can do with it. I also got this really beautiful viscose print. It's a paisley viscose in this really vibrant hot pink with these really pretty blue and white details on it. Hopefully you can see. It is super lightweight viscose fabric so it has absolutely beautiful drape to it of course. It is really going to be very breathable and lovely to wear when it's nice and hot as well. I think it's going to look really cute. My husband has requested, it's always, always fun when he gets involved with his requests, he has requested a wiggle dress in this. And I do have a wiggle dress pattern from the Sustainable Style British, Great British Sewing Bee book. So I might think about using that or think about any other styles that I might wanna use because that one might be a little bit better for a bit more structure, but I think it's gonna be a really stunning dress. That one I got, I think three or maybe three and a half yards up just to make sure that I have plenty. And again, it's a good wide fabric. Another one that I got is a fun t-shirt kind of fabric. So this is a viscose, jersey fabric, quite lightweight. Isn't that color beautiful? Oh, I love this color. It is got a really interesting slubby texture to it, which is what drew me to it, especially when solids, I tend to like something with a bit more structure or a bit more texture rather. So hopefully you can see that sort of slubby element coming through. Now this fabric was actually supposed to be 
$5.99 a yard and I spotted a little hole which just looks like a snag. It just looks like it's got sort of caught on something. And then the uh, person rolling it out noticed that there was a second one in there as well. They are really quite in the middle of the pieces of fabric, so I can very easily work around them. They're not gonna get in the way or anything like that. But because they were there, they gave it to me for $3.99 a yard. So $4 a yard for this. I think I ended up getting two yards, maybe two and a half yards, I can't remember, but again, nice and wide fabric. So I'm definitely gonna be making some t-shirts from that one. It's probably gonna be more for summertime or something, but I was thinking even something with a little cowl neck, it's got that really nice drape would work really well. But yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one either, but it's really soft, it's really drapey, it's really lovely, and I think it will make a great top for sure. And then the last thing I got is some denim. I ended up getting some bull denim. It's black denim, which is never gonna be that interesting on camera, but it is a really nice, heavier weight denim, it's good sort of structured denim, and it has a little bit of stretch. So it is 97% cotton, 3% elastane. So it, I would say it's more of like, you know, there's a bit of give rather than a whole lot of stretch to it. So I probably want to make something that is meant to be for non-stretch rather than something that's stretch. I'll see what I can get away with, but there is a little bit of give to it and it will be a really cool, long lasting, thing I'm sure overall. So it will be something that I can use I'm sure for years and wear for years to come. So that will be a fun one for sure. So on the whole I would say it was more of a staffed, stash building kind of a project. I am someone who tends to buy things with projects in mind but when you have an opportunity like I said all these fabrics were pretty inexpensive. Nothing was more than $6.99 a yard and a lot of it was like $3 or $4.99 a yard. So you kind of can't go wrong and if I'm going to use these things at some point I might as well spend the money when I'm going to get them for a good price. Now obviously you're not going to be buying a whole lot of fabric and then just being able to take that home like it's no big deal. It's heavy. Fabric is heavy. We really really struggled to get it into our suitcases and not go over the limit of, of weights in our bags. So both my husband and I ended up having fabric in the back the bottom of our backpacks as our carry-ons. So thank you, Phil, for kindly taking some fabric in your bag. I obviously had mine as well in my own bag, and that was the only way I was able to get it home. I think when I ordered stuff online, I had it in my mind that, yeah, I don't want to get too much fabric because it does get quite heavy. But then when I was at Vogue Fabrics, I think I just got a little bit carried away, and I didn't think about the weight of it all. And we literally just squeezed by. We had like a 20 kilo limit on our weight of our bags, and one was 19.5 and the other one was 19.9 kilos. So yeah, we, we were close to the wire, but we managed to get it all through. As far as our trip coming back home, that was a little mini melodrama, which I'm not necessarily going to get into the full details of, but as you can imagine, we had to get COVID tests within three days of our flight coming back to the UK. We ended up going to Walgreens, who were able to do the test for us for free, which I was amazed by. We were getting quotes of like $140 each, $165 each, you know, for, for each of us to have the test at other places. But Walgreens said they'll just charge the British government for it because the American government pays for the COVID test for Americans. I'm American anyway, so who knows, maybe I would have been able to sneak in, but I don't have insurance and I don't have you know, residents in the US, so I didn't know if that was gonna work out, but they did agree to do the tests and they did take the tests, but by the time we were getting onto our flight to Ireland where we had a connection, we still didn't have any negative result yet, and they were understandably very reluctant to give us our boarding passes and let us go through because we weren't gonna be able to necessarily go through all the way to the UK without those negative COVID tests. Ireland doesn't require a COVID test if you've had both vaccines, and my husband and I have both had both vaccines. So we were able to get the boarding passes to Dublin, which is where we were flying through. And it was a pretty stressful time though, up till that point, trying to, you know, call the place we'd had the test, try and chase it up, sending emails, you know, just having a little bit of a, a nightmare really getting through. Our flight was then really delayed leaving Chicago. So we were in the airport for longer than we expected. By the time we were getting to Dublin, we had 20 minutes between us landing and the flight taking off to go to London. We didn't even know if we were gonna have our COVID test results. We didn't have any boarding passes. I don't know how, but we managed to get through. We had negative COVID test results when we landed. It had all been processed. We actually had gotten boarding passes on our phones earlier that they let us use. We went through, we literally went in, got on the plane, and we must have left within you know five, 10 minutes. Our bags, on the other hand, 
didn't make it in time. So we managed to get those sent to us the next day, which was, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit stressful considering my suitcase had a whole ton of me made clothes in addition to all the lovely fabrics and things that I bought while I was in Chicago. It's all here now in one piece and we are happy to be back, happy to be safe and COVID free. It's been a bit of a stressful journey at times, but on the whole, so, so worth it to be able to go home and see my family. I hope it was fun for you guys to hear a little bit about my trip to Chicago. Let me know in the comments down below if you've got any trips planned. I know it's not the best time to be traveling and I really wouldn't be traveling unless I was going to see my family, but you know, family is everything. We have to do what we can to be able to see them. And I think all of us have recognized that more now than ever before. If you are enjoying my video and you want to see more of what I'm doing with these fabrics, you want to see more of my content, please do subscribe. Give me a like if you enjoyed hearing a little catch up with me today, and I will see you all again very soon with more videos. Bye!